So the Cowboys avoid an 0-2 start in the Big 12. Now the big question for OU, can they do the same thing this Saturday as they host Missouri? Aaron Kinnett reporting from Florence, Alabama. We're less than 16 hours away from showtime here, the Division II National Championship game between Pitt State and Wayne State. Pittsburgh State has invaded San Antonio, and the Gorillas Team Hotel is right here on the Riverwalk. And the challenge tomorrow for Pitt State is Shaw University, a school out of North Carolina. A new era of Pitt State men's basketball will begin this season. And of course, Gene Iba retiring after 15 years. A spot in the College Baseball World Series was on the line tonight in Waco, Texas, as the Arkansas Razorbacks face Baylor in the Super Regional title game. The Razorbacks are going to get back to Omaha for the first time since 2009. In trouble, though, in the fourth inning. Bases loaded for the Bears, but Dave Jorn gets a strikeout. And he's fired up. In the ninth inning, we're still scoreless. Two outs, two on. Dominic Fiacello strikes out to end the inning. We go to extra innings. Top ten, Jake Wise off the bench for the Razorbacks. This is clutch. A base hit. Brian Anderson already running, and he scores here. Makes it one nothing. Arkansas, bottom half of the tenth. Baylor with two on, threatening. But Colby Suggs ends it with a strikeout right there. And Arkansas is heading back to Omaha in the College World Series with a one nothing shutout win over Baylor. They'll face Kent State Saturday in their opening game. Oklahoma trying to keep their College World Series dreams alive. Taking on South Carolina, this game was 0-0 in the sixth inning yesterday when rain forced it to be suspended. So here in the seventh, the Sooners, a bad throw to third, allows T.J. Costin to score one nothing South Carolina. Gamecocks lead it 2-0 when OU's Evan Mystic singles to right. That's going to bring in a run to make it 2-1. to one. But in the eighth inning, South Carolina again using the bunt. Tanner English lays it down. L.B. Dantzler scores. And South Carolina is heading back to Omaha. They win it 5-1. to one. The Gamecocks are going for their third straight national title. When you think basketball, you usually think two teams on the court at the same time. But actually, there are three, and the third being the team of officials. And like any good team, they're out there encouraging each other. Good call, good call. Good call, Ken. Good call. That we've got two friends, our, our two guys in, that are wearing the stripes with us, and we've got to stay together. So, and if we don't, then we're out there on an island. As a matter of fact, part of the ball was still in the basket. Yeah. And he hit it. He, he definitely. Well, I'm glad you got it because I did not have a good look at it. During the course of the game, the officials also have to communicate with the other participants, namely the players and coaches. Get out of the lane, White. You're all right now. One, two, two. Straight up on your screen. Stay straight up. That's the ball. He you, probably the grabbed man, him. The man went he up strong. He grabbed him. But down there, I mean, you, if you change your shot, it's a foul. Yeah, the okay. man went up strong. Okay. Went, okay. Made the basket. Okay. We're no good. Problem. It takes a lot of focus. We have to focus a lot uh, to, to take the floor uh, because, you know, you've got ten guys and they're all, they're all moving at one time and you've got three guys trying to watch those ten guys. And I know the guys, the people up in the stands, they're watching their little Johnny or their little Susie, and so they're watching one out of ten, and we got to watch all ten. No doubt officials realize criticism from fans is part of the job, but they hope everyone who goes to the games can be understanding and respectful of the job they're trying to do. I would say, number one, we're human. You know, we, we hear some of the stuff that comes out. We, you know, we can't react, but we do hear it. Um, and, yeah, we're going to make mistakes. I, you know, I, I, I made one specifically tonight that I'm probably going to take to bed with me tonight because, you know, I feel bad about missing a call. I know I missed it. Number one, we don't care who wins the ball game. It doesn't matter to us. We come to do a job to go home and reflect on that job when we're done. We go out, we train, we approach it professionally, we work hard, and we give it our very best. Perhaps the most famous Joplin native returned to his hometown today. Jamie McMurray came to see for himself the devastation to the city, and that includes the home and neighborhood he grew up in. Yeah, look at that, Mom. Go in there and look at that. Like hundreds of homes in Joplin and Duquesne, the one at 4471 East 25th Street is rubble, the home where Jamie McMurray grew up. What do you think of all this? Well, I haven't been here in so long. I was actually just trying to get, kind of figure out, you know, it, uh, it's hard to picture exactly where you're at without, without all the walls up. But, um, 
think the thing I was most curious about, honestly, was looking in that bathroom, like where we used to go every time a tornado came through. And just to, I mean, you always wondered when you got in there, was that the, was that the correct place to be? I mean, it's overwhelming looking at, uh, looking at everything. The family living here somehow survived the tornado taking cover near Jamie's old bedroom. And that you're talking about the tree fell from right over there? Uh-huh. I can fell this way, right? Uh -huh. I got you. All the way across the bed. And so that was the, the here it is moment, right? Oh. You, know, you, you move away from here, and, and I was telling when my mom moved, moved from here, I, I actually kind of wanted to buy this, and I, I thought, well, it'll always be there. I could always, you know, go back. Um, and I, I think it's probably the most upsetting part to me is that, um, you know, this is, this is where you grew up, and it's, it's not here anymore. Jamie's parents, Dad Jim and Mom Susan, built the home in the early 70s. They later divorced, and Susan sold it five years ago and moved to North Carolina to be with Jamie. And today was very emotional for them as well. There's a lot of memories here and uh, a lot of friends here, but luckily everybody I've talked to is okay, and they, they can rebuild, and uh, they'll put their lives back together. McMurray also took time to see the destruction across town. He visited the Convoy of Hope Relief Center, met with some old friends, and comforted some of the victims. And for Jamie and his family, this has become a very personal cause. Chapel, Missouri will always be where I'm from. And I, I, I said earlier, when they introduced you every single weekend at the races, they introduced you as being from Chapel, Missouri. And, and it certainly has a really special place in my heart. To be honest with you guys, and, and you know this because you're here, you can't really explain what, what you're looking at. I mean, you, you can look at it on TV, but you can't explain it in person. You know? San Antonio, Texas, home of the Alamo and also home to the Division II Women's Basketball National Championship this year. And the Pittsburgh State women are preparing for their Elite Eight game tomorrow against Shaw University, the team holding their practice this afternoon on the campus of St. Mary's University here in San Antonio. And this Pitt State team, which has already made school history, now wants to make a special season even more special. We came out, had a great practice today, very spirited and, um, you know, it was short and sweet, but it was, uh, you could tell they're focused and they're, they're ready to go. So, The last few days it hasn't really hit us, but now it's tomorrow and uh, it's kind of getting nerve-wracking, but um, we're just kind of staying together, having fun. We're all excited and focused, just ready to get out there and bring it back a championship for our team. It's been a busy day for the Pitt State team. Before practice, they visited a local middle school in San Antonio and spoke not only of the importance of staying in school, but also led the kids in some guerrilla cheers. We didn't really know what to expect, and so we came here. And uh, there's a lot of kids that were really inspired by our message, so it's cool to give them a good message. Tomorrow's game will be the first ever meeting between Pittsburgh State and Shaw University. This Lady Bear team comes in red hot. They've won 12 games in a row. And tonight at 10, we'll hear from their coach on this matchup tomorrow. Reporting from San Antonio, Eric Kinnett for your hometown sports.